Hey there, Mr. Bill here, and today I'm talking about granular synthesis. So this is something that I use a lot in my music and something that I don't believe I've ever given a dedicated tutorial to and something that is uh, as cheesy as it sounds near and dear to my heart. It's something that I use a, a lot, like almost in every single tune of mine. I'll use granular synthesis at some stage and quite often people ask me like you know certain questions about sounds and stuff in my music or they'll send me someone else's music and, and send me um, and ask me about sounds in their music and and quite often um, the sounds that they're asking about are uh, either wavetable stuff or granular stuff um, and and to me granular synthesis is like the most interesting of the syntheses i think it's more interesting than wavetable because in a way i think granular synthesis encompasses wavetable synthesis <coughs> so, uh, without further, further ado, uh, what is it? What is granular synthesis? Well, if we look at the Wikipedia page, it says granular synthesis is a basic sound synthesis method that operates on the micro sound timescale. It's based on the same principle as sampling. However, the voices are not played back conventionally. They're split into small pieces of sound that are around 1 to 50 milliseconds, and they're called grains. And then multiple grains may be laid on top of each other and play at different speeds, phases, volumes, and frequencies, among other parameters. So essentially, it's just sampling. Where we're at with this, basically, so far, is we know that granular synthesis is basically sampling, and we know that it just has to samples this it has to play the sample back at different times and take little snippets of these things between, I guess, 10 or well, maybe even less than that, maybe. Yeah, 10 seems reasonable. Has to take little snippets of sound between 10 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds and just play those back randomly. And then it also has to change the pitch of all of those. And then it also has to change the phase of all of those. And what else does it have to change? The volume and the frequency, which is just the pitch. And it has to change the speed, which is also somewhat just the pitch. Um, so I'm gonna show you some free tools that you can use here to achieve this. So the first one I'm gonna show you is Granulator 2. Um, this is free on Ableton's website. And what I'll do here, just for the example, is I'll actually just count into a microphone and then I'm gonna put the sample of me counting into Granulator. And I found that that's a really good way to explain it because every fucking person on the planet knows what counting sounds like. You've all done it. So that way we can really exactly hear what is being played back when and what's going on with the pitch. So I'll just record a sample of me counting from one to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and now I'm gonna put this into the granulizer and this will be a good, and you could do this yourself um, just to see exactly what's going on. So if I play back a note right now, you can see it's just looping that one little bit. <laughs> And if I grab this playhead and start moving it around, you get stuff like this. So if we turn the grain size right down, you can see that it makes the the loop longer or the loop length longer. And this is very similar to simpler. Um, you can do this in simpler for sure. So if I grab a version of simpler here, um, I think you have to have it in classic mode. So yeah, if you have this in classic mode, you can see this loop length thing here. Uh, where would we, hmm, I might have to re-record that sample because I deleted it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's just use that, throw this in here. And then you can see this loop length mode is sort of a similar type of deal. I can move that around. So this yellow area here is basically what's going on here in, granula in granulator. Um, but granulator kind of goes a step further. It starts doing all this weird stuff. So if I start making the grain smaller, we get something like this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, four. But still what I'm doing is I'm dragging around that, that playhead or that loop brace to try and play back the sections of the sample that I want. What happens if I start turning up this spray control, and this is where the counting comes in handy because you can start to hear what number is being said when, and then I just hold down a note, you get something like this. Four, three, four, four, five, five three, four, 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 three, three, seven. So you see the, the higher the spray goes. Um, so right now we're sitting the loop brace around the number four. 
And if I have the sprayer around halfway. Four, 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 four. You can see you're getting a couple of threes and a couple of fives. But if I turn this up, you'll start to get a couple of sevens and a couple of twos and six. A couple of sixes four, too. Four, two. So it just it expands the range of where the samples will play back, and then file position is just moving that loop brace around, uh, and then grain is the the brace size. So you can hear that it's playing stuff back at different pitches, different speeds, and and whatnot. So this is definitely a granulizer. It has its own internal FM oscillator. So if we turn this up. You can hear that that this internal FM oscillator is um, is FMing the sample. And FM, for those who don't know, I can do a quick little explanation on this, but this really needs its own video as well. Okay, so FM, the best way I think to explain it is it's essentially with FM synthesis, it's it, you have the frequency of one oscillator modulating the tone of another. So if we play this right now, we have, let's just, Turn this to 440. So right there we have a sine wave playing. It's playing an A. <clears throat> and what we want to do is start turning up oscillator B. And what you'll see here, we can also make this 440 as well. And once we turn this up, you'll start to see this secondary harmonic sort of starting to form in this sine wave. You can see how it's starting to form like almost a secondary sine wave within that one. But it's not quite a sine wave, it's a little different. And then if we change this frequency from 440, which is the, the um, one that we're modulating, if we make the modulator something that's not 440, it'll be a little bit weirder. And then so on and so forth with different frequencies. And also with different shapes. If we say like a square shape, it could be different again. And what you'll notice with this is if you start using an LFO and you start to put this on really high rates and using different shapes, you can see it kind of behaves in a similar way and, and what you're doing with that LFO is you're modulating the frequency well at this point you, are, you can modulate anything you can modulate the filter if you wanted to or, or any destination in this list but um, <clears throat> for the most part what you need to understand about FM is just that it's, it's an oscillator or some sort of modulator source um, that's that's modulating whatever it, whatever the tone the the tone is that you have so for instance in this case the tone that we have is me counting from one to eight and then this thing has its own internal oscillator which is fming that yeah, it sounds familiar right it sounds similar to the stuff we we're doing with operator uh, and then we have pitch here as well and this just changes the pitch of the sample and then we have an adsr and then there's a bunch of other stuff filters and whatnot that you can mess around with on this so anyway there's a bunch of interesting stuff that you can get out of granulator what i uh, would suggest is if you want to make more like tonal resonant type pad sounds then load some longer noise in there like uh I'm sure if I search my folder for ambience of some sort and throw this in here. You get something more like that. And in the Wikipedia, um, it says at low speeds of playback, this is kind of a soundscape often described as a cloud. And I think that this is what they're talking about with that sort of stuff. So you can see these playheads now in here are going really, really slowly. And I think that's what they mean about the cloud thing.
So you can see all these little playheads here that are just moving through the sample. And if you want to get glitchy sounding stuff, what I suggest is putting in something with a lot of like sharp and short transients, like say your keys or something like that. Um, like I'm sure I have a sample of keys here somewhere. Yeah, like this sort of stuff. This is perfect if you want to make those kind of really glitchy sounds. So that's one really cool tool for doing this sort of granular stuff. But I want to show you another tool. Uh, this one is called Palindrome and it's by Glitch Machines. And this one is a little bit crazier. Uh, it does a lot of the same stuff. So this size thing is, is basically the equivalent to um, this file position control, I believe. Uh, whoops, no, the grain control. So this grain control that makes the playhead smaller and, and larger. That's essentially what this size thing does. The start position here is essentially what file position does on granulator. Pitch is the same as on granulator, it's just pitch. Um, and then this also has some effects. It has a bandpass filter, a, a drive, a, a wave folder, I believe, a ring modulator, a delay, <coughs> a couple of things. Uh, and it also has these envelopes, which is kind of cool. And you can attach these envelopes to almost anything on the, on the thing, uh, on the device. And if you go back out to this original screen that it shows you when you first open it, it has all these vectors. And these vectors, I believe, um, you can only map to volume. But because you can hold four samples in this thing, so like we can have four samples with all different envelopes and all different effects and all, all different crazy stuff going on. And then all of the samples can be uh, like using these vectors to, to turn up and down. So you can kind of use them as like a dynamic mixer type thing. Um, and I've gone in on this thing for a couple of hours at this point, but it's so deep that it's like, so it's like going in on this thing requires, I don't know, you should just get a demo of it and play with it. It's really cool. But if we go through some of the presets, you'll see what kind of stuff it can do. So for instance, if we, um, turn down, or actually let's, here, let's just open a new version of this. So it's initialized. And then I can kind of show you what it does. So if I load an audio file into here, which I believe I have to do by, um, it's when you install it, you have to put the palindrome samples folder somewhere. And then you just put all, I've just been putting my sounds in here that I've been loading into it. So like, let's say that I put this glitchy sound into it. All right, so there's some reverb here. I'll turn that off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of these envelopes here to to map to some of these parameters. So you just drag it the same way as you would in like Serum or something like that, although this is quite different to Serum. And then I believe that you can just draw envelopes in here like so. And you can see now that this envelope here is affecting the star position. And I think I can loop the envelope. Yep, and then if we go to these different envelopes, we can start just mapping these to different things. And then we can try out some effects. And then if we use one of these vectors here, so let's go back to um, out of envelope mode. So envelope mode is just this button here. So if we go back out to the to the original view, you can see here if I have this vector on, it will just go up, up and down in volume. Uh, let's put it on mode one, I believe. So let's say in this secondary slot, if I loaded the same sample again, and then made two different envelopes for the for the start time here, let's say I created a looped envelope like so, and then another really quick envelope for the size, and loop that too, and then perhaps another one for the pitch, and loop that. And then I have a secondary vector here for this one. You 
yeah, anyway, it gets pretty crazy. This is a really nice tool for, for this kind of stuff. Um, and then I have a few other tools to show you too. <clears throat> There's this thing called Sandman Pro by Unfiltered Audio. And this thing technically I don't think is supposed to be a granulizer. It's, I think, supposed to be a delay of some sort. But for me, it ticks all the boxes for granulizer, and I'll show you why. If we reference back to here again, uh, it just says that multiple grains have to be laid on top of each other and played back at different speeds, phases, volume, and frequency, right? So if we play something into this, and then we hit freeze here, or sleep, I think they call it. So let's play something into here. Okay, so we've frozen that little bit into, into this plugin. And now it has a start point and an end point. So it has the same things that we've seen on Simpler and Granulator and Palindrome. Uh, it also has modulators here. So if we open this up and start attaching this to, to the start and end points here and doing whatever we like, we can actually even attach a modulator here to the rate of this one. The modulation in the unfiltered audio stuff is just ridiculous. Um, so let's try this. Okay, it's getting there. So if we now take this and apply it to this delay time. What if we add a, another modulator here, but instead we make this say like a sample and hold noise and attach that here. What's that gonna do? Uh, we also have a sample right here. If we turn this down, I believe it gets um, lowered in, yeah, it gets lowered in bit depth, I believe. Or the sample rate perhaps gets lowered actually. I believe it's a sample rate thing, but we can modulate that too. And at this point, I would say we've ticked all the boxes for granulizer. So to me, that that ticks all the boxes. It modulates, it, it samples things back because you can freeze stuff into it and, it and it plays it back at different pitches, volumes, phases, and whatnot. So for me, I would class that as a granulizer. And then I have one last one to show you. It's um, by a company called GRM. <clears throat> and this thing is crazy. These, these guys, um, they're old school. They've been making plugins for a long, long time. Uh, and if I play this sound into here again it's the same sort of thing i can record into it freeze it and then start messing with the random pitches and and uh loops and and all sorts of stuff and i'll show you what that sounds like all right so i'm gonna hit freeze so i just hit freeze and you can see there's one playhead here playing back this sample uh, i can mess with the pitch here or i can turn up this random pitch function and you can see that's creating multiple playheads now. And if I start turning up the pitch offset and the random durations and the mono and stereo and just start messing with parameters here, you can get crazy stuff like this. So there's also manual ways to do this. And some, some of the ways that I like to do this is recording stuff into channels like so. So if I record this into a channel and make this audio. So let's take this audio now and then I'm gonna record this audio into a new channel. And what I'm gonna do here is mess around with the pitch and the playhead just by myself like manually and that's essentially the same thing as well it's just not as automated so let's see what that sounds like so that's essentially a similar thing and if you actually check out um i think two tutorials ago i did a tutorial on cliff x pro I actually made Ableton automate all of these things using CliffX, which I called host-based granulation. And now you can see why, because it ticks all the boxes for what a granulizer does. Um, so yeah, I think I've talked about most of the things uh, that I think is relevant to, to granular synthesis. 
So yeah, if you enjoyed that tutorial, awesome. Um, go pick up Granulator 2 if you haven't because it's free, but also go pick up Palindrome because this thing just came out and it's ridiculous. It's one of my favorite granulas granulizers at the moment and yeah i don't know even just like the presets are so insane like ivo the guy who runs this company is so good yeah it's lots of fun uh another thing to check out is twisted tools they have some really awesome stuff and also richard divine i believe has a couple of reactor patches uh one of them is called grain cube and I think that's a granulizer. Uh, but definitely, yeah, check out Twisted Tools, Glitch Machines, Richard Devine, Unfiltered Audio, GRM. Uh, also, Melda has, a, has one called Multiband Granular, which is literally what I just showed you, but in a multiband fashion in the same way that like EQs, or sorry, um, compressors can be multiband. So you can have different granulization happening on the low, high, and mid frequencies. Or I think you can have up to like six bands or something like that. I currently don't have it installed, but I used to have it installed and it's insane. Um, so yeah, there's tons of options out there for this, for this sort of stuff and hopefully enjoyed that tutorial. Cheers.